Hi everyone, Chris from Marshall Body here and welcome to this vlog and Q&A for January uh, 2021. Can you believe it? So news this month is that uh, the blog articles that all disappeared from the website last month are all online. Uh, they're not quite formatted as they were previously, but at least all of the text is there and that's a start. I'm going to be working my way through all of those uh, over the course of the next few months and just adding images back in and all that sort of stuff. So if you uh, have some articles that you want to read through or you want to see what we've published before, you can now do that. I've also just published a new blog post, which is all about posture something that is quite a dogmatic subject in the martial arts with certain styles holding certain postures to be absolute. You know, our head should always be put, tucked in, chin tucked in, head pointing up, shoulders should be in the center of the body, all of these different things. And, and, and contrasting that, that opinion and that dogma against the realities of other styles. So how does a Muay Thai fighter hold their posture? How does a, a, a wrestler hold their posture? And, and seeing how posture itself is actually much more of a fluid and changing thing than some absolute that we have to hold in, in perpetuity. So uh, that article is now up online. Have a look at the blog and you'll be able to see that article. Uh, secondly, we are now running Zoom classes for uh, Marshall Body. These happen every Thursday in the morning and the evening. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time, UK time. So if you're interested in joining us for a, for a, a, a bit of training, it's normally 30 to, four, to, to one hour in time, then do jump onto the website and have a look. If you can't find it, just ping me an email and I'll be sure to send you that information. I think people are getting quite a lot out of these sessions. Uh, we're, we're training in these sessions. They're not just a chit chat. And, and we're trying to really develop our skills as we train. So hopefully, People are getting some good uh, content out of that and they're getting some good training and something to work on for the week. And you're more than welcome to join us. You don't have to have any martial body experience to jump onto these Zoom classes. Um, you're going to be getting some new information and uh, it's a lot of fun. So if you're interested, jump online and check that out. Now, also, I'm going to be uploading some shorter challenge type videos to the YouTube channel. Now, these will be sort of a workout of the day type uh, video. They won't be happening every day, okay, but they will be happening with regularity and it will be a short video with a series of exercise that maybe you do in loops. And this will be something that will form sort of a series on the YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, you've hit that bell icon to make sure you get notifications, and then you'll see that content coming online in the next few weeks. So I think that's us all caught up for Marshall Body. Let's have a look at some of the questions for this month. So the first question is, uh, it was directly, a, how do we apply Marshall Body in MMA and in things like Jiu Jitsu? Um, but it is a wider question of how do we apply Marshall Body? And this is a, a question that I get quite a lot. It's, it's an interesting question and it works from a certain set of assumptions. So martial body, um, to many people, appears like it could be something that fits directly into a martial art. So it f looks like it could fit into classically called internal martial arts it, to some. It looks like it could fit into boxing to others. It could, could fit into all of these different martial arts. But actually, that's not really the intended viewpoint of martial body. So if we imagine, let's take MMA as an example. If we imagine an MMA athlete, they will spend a certain percentage of their time working on their grappling. They will send, spend a certain percentage of their time on striking. Um, they will send, spend a certain percentage of their time sparring. They will spend a certain percentage of their time working on wrestling and all of these different things are individual aspects to their game. And most MMA fighters will go and seek specific coaches for these individual things. Now, another aspect of their training will invariably be strength and conditioning. They will have a strength and conditioning coach and that coach will give them 
power training exercises, they will give them uh, endurance training exercise, cardiovascular training exercises, all of these different things in sessions that will test and improve the athlete's overall effectiveness or fitness. And we couldn't really map any of those exercises to an MMA fight. If I look at a, an MMA fight to using a kettlebell and then I match it into the MMA fight, how does that kettlebell exercise relate to fighting? There is no correlation between swinging a kettlebell and having an MMA match. Similarly, if they're doing a deadlift, now we could argue that lifting someone off the floor could be something that you could potentially do in an MMA fight. It's not very common. Um, but the, ac the actual physical exercise of doing a deadlift doesn't map at all to MMA. So we sort of accept that that's the case. We know that they're trying to get cardiovascular benefit and strength benefit and endurance benefit from a specific set of completely unrelated movements, but those movements are well designed to produce those attributes. Now, martial body is extremely similar to that strength and conditioning section of an MMA fighter's training. In that, the movements themselves may not map at all to the martial art that you're doing. But what they do is they focus in on the production of the attributes of the martial body as it is defined in the system. So if I say I, I had the pleasure of coaching a few um, strength and conditioning uh, degree graduates, people who were going through their uh, university degrees to, to learn strength and conditioning and sports science. And I asked one of them, how, how would you teach or, or design a protocol to make your athlete feel heavier when they're in a, in a wrestling match, let's say. And they were a bit stumped. That's not an easy thing to answer. Um, and I'm sure brilliant, excellent and intelligent individuals such as they are, they could figure something out. But martial body is the process of producing attributes like heaviness in a, a scientific and clear way. We use exacting methods. We use principles of release and um, relaxation and, and leading to produce heaviness in a way that we can train it, that the attribute becomes advantageous in your own particular martial style. So we shouldn't be looking at martial body at all, any, any part of martial body as a, martial, a, a training system that fits like a key, exactly the movements and strategies and tactics that you will use in your martial art. Instead, we should look at it just like we look at any type of supplementary training method. Now, many martial artists use things like movement training or they use uh, uh, circuit training or they use you know, many different brands of circuit training like CrossFit or they use strength and conditioning. They, all of these are individual sort of protocols, methodologies that can be advantageous in the fight. And martial body it occupies the same area as all of those protocols or methodologies. It is a method for developing body skill. It is not a method for, apply, for use in a martial art in, in a direct application type of way. So whenever you hear, whenever you look at martial body training or you uh, think, how do I apply martial body in X martial art? have the impression about that MMA fighter who is using strength and conditioning. Th those attributes of strength and cardiovascular endurance map into their martial art. And similarly, heaviness, for instance, of the first body maps directly, especially into grappling and things like that, very, very clearly. We want a heavy top pressure. We want to be able to root against incoming forces. We want to have good rooting for our outgoing forces. We want to have good ability to drop our weight as someone takes a shot on us. All of these things are um, facets of our heaviness, our heavy body skill. And that comes from training the method. And that's true of all of the different bodies, connected, stable, spiral. All of them are simple training methodologies to, to create the habit that, that we then feed into our martial art. So I hope that answers the question about how do we apply martial body 
to MMA and grappling or any martial art in general. Okay, so the next question is about training in general and how do we get the most out of a training session? Um, this is something that is, is sort of vital if we want to improve. And it doesn't matter whether we are doing a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class or whether we are doing a martial body session or whether we're doing sparring with our MMA friends. Getting the most out of the training time that you have is, is vital. It's obvious that in the modern world, we don't have as much time as say in ancient China where people would join a, a, an academy for want of a better phrase. And that's where they would live. They would spend all their time there. Or in Japan where you had uchi deshi, where you would go and live in student. You know, you would stay there all the time and you would train all the time. Most people in the modern world don't have that luxury. So we have to try to maximize the amount of time that we have in any given endeavor. Now that's, like I say, that's true of whether we are training our martial art or we're training a supplementary system like strength and conditioning or, or martial body. So how do I get the most out of my training? Well, first of all, we have to have a deep focus and attention as we train. Now, of course, training needs to be fun and there are certain parts of the training session where we will just, you know, relax and, you know, if you're rolling in jiu-jitsu, you might just relax and chill and have some fun. But when I'm trying to learn new skills or when you're trying to gain uh, more advancement in your body method, it's very important that you have good focus. Now, good focus is not simply being intense and, you know, really sort of trying to be super intense about your training. That's not what good focus means. Good focus means that you are not distracted by other things when you're trying to make your um, advancement. So for instance, when I do jujitsu or when I'm doing um, any sort of martial art, when I'm doing the technical session, section of a session, I'll have extreme focus on what I'm doing. I'll be thinking, okay, where am I placing my hand? Where am I, what, what's the mechanics of the feeling of the person that I'm training with? What is it that makes this technique work or that principle work? Or I'll be going down into that detail to try to zone in on exactly what it is that is the essence of that technique. Now, this is the first sort of thing that most people fail at. And that's not because they don't have, um, they're not trying. It's just that that level of focus, that extreme focus th for maybe 30, 45 minutes of a session is quite hard. So the aim here is to train ourselves to be progressively more focused. So it may be that in between techniques, when you're the dummy and someone's trying it on you, you chill, you let your mind relax. But when it's your turn, you really focus in. And this is the first thing I would recommend to get the most out of a training session is to train your focus. Now, secondly, we want to have goals and objectives in our training. Uh, there is a school of thought that says just train and the skills will come. Now, for some people, that's great. And they, they get skilled just because they turn up a lot. I prefer to have a specific aim or objective in my mind as I train. So. For instance, if I'm training in martial body and I know that my uh, spiral body method is not very good, then what I would do is I will have the goal of improving one aspect of my spiral body. Maybe it's my ability to twist. Maybe it's my ability to rotate my shoulder. And that will be my focus in every technique. Okay, so I have a goal and objective across long term that I will focus on across every technique. So it may be that I'm doing connected body work, but I'm also thinking, okay, how can I make this improve that rotation of the shoulder? And I may be, as I open, I may be thinking, okay, let's, let's turn that humerus bone in the shoulder a little bit further. And then when I enter the next exercise, the same. And this is a really good way of us building skill over time. We have these small areas of focus, these goals, these mini goals and objectives that over time layer on top of each other to create a really good level of skill. Now that's true in jiu-jitsu as well. When I teach jiu-jitsu and I train, quite often I'll be working on a very specific thing and uh, I will focus all of my training towards that. I may be good on top, but I may be working on, the, on something on the bottom. So I'll constantly put myself in that position and work towards that goal. So we have 
the ability to maintain focus, the ability to uh, have set ourselves little mini goals and objectives. Now, these two things on their own are going to see you improve dramatically. But the last thing is uh, perhaps more important than anything else. OK, and that is consistency. Getting the most out of a training session is uh, based on getting a lot of training sessions. All right, because it gives us this ability to recognize flaws or problems that we need to address. If you're training once a month and, uh, you know, I've had students who are super enthusiastic about training. They really love coming and training and feeling the body method and feeling all the weird things that can be done. They go away. I don't see them for two weeks. And when they come back, it's obvious they haven't trained anything. And they're super enthusiastic again. They train really hard and then they go away two weeks, nothing again. Now, this is perhaps the worst way to try to get the most out of a training session. The session itself, you may feel great. You may think this is brilliant. I love this stuff. But if you then don't go away and think about it and dwell on it and train it and get time and be consistent, you don't build up that internal skill, that skill that is innate to the body. So consistency, turning up, getting on the mat, turning up every morning for your own personal training session and consistently training with your mini goals is going to build on the other two things. It's going to build our ability to focus. It's going to build a habit of training and it's going to build little goals and objectives that we find from the training that we undertake. So I hope that that's a good answer for you in, in terms of how do we get the most out of an individual training session. So the next question relates to the other two in some respects. And that is, I am an ex martial artist, whatever it may be. What part of martial body is best for me? OK, really good question and and something that I answer when I do personal training services with people. And that is a question that can be quite hard to answer on our own because we have to be very truthful with ourselves. We have to look at what our martial arts goals and objectives are. We have to understand that first as a as a framework for a combative encounter. But then we have to understand our own deficiencies and flaws. What are we not good at? And how, realistically, how bad are we at it? So one thing I like to do is get people to score their martial body attributes from one to 10. So I'll say, okay, one to 10, how heavy do you think you feel to your partners? Now, some people, like I have quite good heavy body skill and people who train me in jujitsu, they'll say, Chris, his pressure is insane. He feels very much heavier than he looks. So I, I would say I've got a good eight or nine on the on the scale for heavy body. Now, stable body, how do we assess that? Now, we would say, OK, do I am I able to be contorted when someone pushes and pulls on me? And you can get your, your partner to do this or, or your wife or someone. Just get them to push and pull your shoulders. If your body moves around, you don't have too much stable body skill. If you if your whole body moves as a unit, OK, you have a bit better stable body skill. So we can go through and really assess from one to 10, how uh, good am I at each of the attributes? How much of each of the attributes do I have? Now that's going to feed into that first question. What are the goals and objectives of the style of martial art that I practice? So let's say I do Aikido. Aikido is, is um, uh, characterized by its uh, mobility the ability to move smoothly in circles is characterized by good posture and internal structure. So if I don't have agility, let's say elastic body, and I don't have stable body very well, then my Aikido won't be as good because I won't have the posture and I won't have the mobility. OK, now if I don't have spiral body again, my Aikido won't be as good because I don't have that ability to turn, to twist, to express circles. So we can see that 
when we look at the goal and objective, goals and objectives of the martial arts style from a body perspective, and then we map that onto our own capabilities in the six bodies, we come up with a, a sort of map for what we should be training. So uh, when we have that map, we have the, the, the martial art, our attributes, we can then come up with a plan and we can say, okay, my martial art, I'm a wrestler, I want good agility, I want good heaviness, and I want good connection. Okay, let's say that those are the three things. I'm sure there's much more to wrestling than that. But heaviness is, is good for rooting, for dropping onto someone as they, sh as they shoot towards you. Um, uh, agility is good for moving quickly in for your shots and things like that. And connection is good for power. So let's say those are our three things. And I assess the martial body system and I say, okay, my, well, my uh, fluid body isn't great, but that's, you know, maybe that's not as important. Of course, the fluid body is pretty much relevant to everything, but let's say that it's not. But actually my heavy body is not very good. I'm very agile, I'm very strong, but I'm, I, I get taken down easy. I'm not able to root myself very well. I'm not, I don't feel very heavy when I'm interacting with a the partner. There's your answer for what you should be training. You should be training a lot of heavy body work, okay? And then some connected and uh, elastic work as well. And that map then gives me a focus. And once you've got that, and you understand how to structure your own training, you understand what you should be working on, suddenly you're able to build that attribute to fit in to your martial art. Now for some people, and I, I know people like this, they're pretty good in, on all the aspects. They, they, maybe there are five on, on them all, which is not bad. And for those people, they can work through the system in order. Heavy, stable, connected, agile, complex, fluid. Boom, they start going through everything. They see it progression over time, and then they rotate back to the start. Um, so I hope that answers the question um, and, and answers some interesting points about how we can identify what we should be training. Of course, we have to take a good hard look at ourselves when we do this process. We have to say, okay, this is not good. I need to work hard on this. Okay, for me, it's things like hips, it's things like shoulders. I have to work hard, because uh, I work at a desk a lot, to, to mitigate some of the problems that are associated with that. And I know that I need to work on those things. Um, so understand what, what what your martial art needs, understand where you are in martial body, put the two together and you'll come up with a great plan for how you can improve uh, your own martial body skill. Okay, so I hope that's answered your questions and I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that also had the same question in their mind. Now, if you do have a question, please jump onto the website and ping me an email. I'm by no means an expert on everything, but I'm more than happy to give you my opinion on any subject related to body method training, to martial arts, etc. Please don't be uh, worried about sending a question. There is no question that is too stupid. There's people out there thinking exactly what you're thinking. So do reach out and I'll be happy to answer your questions. So the only thing left for me to say is, of course, there's plenty of courses on the Martial Body website. Uh, the phase two courses are well underway. We have the heavy, stable, connected courses. All of the foundations are online and there's plenty of toolkits in there as well. So jump on there, grab yourself a course and, and start training this work as soon as possible. You're gonna get a great deal out of it, especially at this time when we're all locked down. The other thing to do is to, of course, subscribe to the YouTube page so that you can get some of these upcoming videos. And uh, other than that, I wish you all the best for the next month of training. Get in there, really train hard, and I will speak to you in a month's time. Take care.